Hello everybody and welcome to Insider's Guide. Today we're continuing our discussion of the legendary California mountain, Kirkwood. With Kirkwood, there's a lot to talk about, so this Insider's Guide is split into four parts. For this part, I'll cover the most iconic part of the resort, which is all the terrain off chair 10, the wall. If you haven't already, go check out part A to get some great background on Kirkwood. So with that, let's continue an Insider's Guide to Ski Resorts, Kirkwood. Before we get started, I once again want to remind everyone of the PSA from Part B. The legendary steeps off Chair 10 are very accessible, but this doesn't mean that everyone should be up there. Please don't even think about riding up either cornice or wall, especially wall, if you're not experienced. These lifts have no easy ways down, and even the quote-unquote easiest ways down are still very challenging. Another reminder from last episode is that all of Kirkwood's expert terrain is really poorly marked, so you'll have to memorize which line you're doing. Without further ado, let's dive into the most iconic part of the mountain. Riding up chair 10 is one of the most special experiences you can get anywhere. It really feels like a time capsule of a different era, and no matter how good you get, it's always intimidating being on this old rickety chair that slowly drags you to the top of this gnarly mountain. The intense wind gusts you'll feel at the summit are the cherry on top. Chair 10 is one of the longest lift rides out there, and this would normally drive me nuts. However, it's such an integral part of the experience that I have no problem with it. Even though Chair 10 and Chair 6 serve pretty similar caliber terrain, there's something truly special about the terrain off 10 specifically. Once you get to the top of 10, keep moving to make space for others as the top terminal of 10 sits atop a very narrow ridge. Chair 10 is home to perhaps one of the most iconic inbounds runs in the entire country, the wall. The wall is definitely the signature run off Chair 10, and it shares its name with the lift itself. This is the run that put Kirkwood on the map and what makes it place highly on every expert's bucket list. When you get off the lift, there are two entrances into the wall. The easier of the two entrances, which is Looker's left of the lift, essentially requires you to do a 270 degree turn down a groomed ramp that leads to a sizable wind lift. This entrance is very steep for the first two to three turns before it mellows out. On lower snow years, this can be decently challenging and have some rocks scattered about. On higher snow years, Kirkwood will sometimes groom this run, and it makes for a fantastic cruiser. Most of the year, however, you'll encounter large bumps and an endless bowl. This entrance isn't too bad, and is honestly suitable for confident, advanced skiers. Although, this is another part of the mountain where you'll see plenty of yard sales on a daily basis. The real entrance into the wall, the one looker's right of the lift, requires you to go past the skull and bone sign and along the summit ridge. This entrance is essentially what the groomed ramp that leads to the other entrances bypasses. It's a corniced face that's incredibly steep for the first 100 feet or so, and depending on the snow year, it can involve some large rocks to navigate through. You'll eventually merge onto the same bowl that the other entrance leads into. When reaching the end of this face, watch out for the traverse tracks. They can easily result in a fall. So is the wall really worth all the hype it gets? In my opinion, not really. The easier entrance gets skied out really quickly and is usually very busy and congested on weekends. The main entrance into the wall is pretty cool, but it isn't nearly as cool as some of the other terrain that you can find elsewhere on 10, and often takes a while to actually be skiable. Don't get me wrong, the wall is a fantastic run, but I think there are plenty of other lines off chair 10 that are integral to what makes this zone truly special. More on that to come. Once you enter this bowl, you have a few options other than taking it all the way to the bottom. If you stay skiers right towards the run headwaters, you'll come to a saddle which contains the well-marked entrance to Eagle Bowl. Eagle Bowl is best experienced on a powder day and is one of the most epic runs at Kirkwood, and it offers a ton of variety. Eagle Bowl itself has plenty of fun little shoots, cliffs, and gullies, but the real standout here is the ability to traverse to the lower cirque terrain. If you stay high and traverse skiers right of Eagle Bowl, you can actually hit a few really steep shoots and cliffs found right underneath the cirque. The Cirque is a permanently closed face off Thimble Peak and is easily the most breathtaking feature at Kirkwood. The Cirque does occasionally open for big mountain competitions, however it remains closed to the general public. The Lower Cirque remains open and accessible from Eagle Bowl for those in the know. To exit the Eagle Bowl area, you'll have to take the very flat Devil's Corral run out to the bottom of Chair 2 and then to the bottom of the resort. However, an easy way to avoid this is to simply start traversing skiers left a little earlier and make your way down to the top of chair 1. Head further down from the Eagle Bowl entrance and sidestep a bit uphill to reach the rocky outcropping that is Norm's Nose. 
Norm's nose offers two to three gnarly shoots that require straight lining and some mandatory drops. This area isn't really that well traveled, and it's hard to spot some of the cliffs, so make sure to ski with a buddy here. Moving back to the wall, if you stay a little skier left of Buckboard, you'll find one of the most darkly hilarious jerry traps out there. Dick's Drop, also known as Waterfall by locals, is one of the resort's signature straight lines. Dick's is such an unassuming run as it starts off as a mellow goalie, before quickly becoming this beast of a straight line. Oftentimes, unfamiliar guests will take Dick's Drop all the way to the choke and be forced to either send it or hike up the incredibly steep walls of the goalie, neither of which are great options. If you're not confident in your straight lining abilities, don't even think of going down Dick's since there's basically no escape. If you haven't figured it out yet, Kirkwood is notorious for its several straight lines you can find all around the resort. Dix is not as steep as some of the other straight lines at the resort, but is very narrow, especially in the early season. During the core season, the chute widens significantly and can allow for some very sharp jump turns. After the choke, Dix filters into the drain like all the other runs in Wagon Wheel Bowl. In addition to Dix Drop, there are plenty of unmarked chutes and spines in the area. Moving back up to the top of 10, if you want an entrance that's even harder than the primary entrance to the wall, top of the wall is a great one to do. This entrance is located between the wall's main entrance and all the way. It's even steeper, longer, and rockier than the main entrance and is only skiable in very solid snow years. Alright, now we get to my favorite part of Kirkwood, which is the huge section of Wagon Wheel Bowl that is exclusively accessible via Chair 10. If I could only ski one zone at Kirkwood, this would be it. Every run here is truly the full package. They're relentless in technicality and length, but absolutely worth doing if you have the ability. You can technically take the easiest entrance into the wall and traverse all the way skiers left into Wagon Wheel Bowl to access the high quality and steep lower goalies. However, by doing this, you'll bypass the extreme entrances that make these runs so special. If you're confident, I absolutely recommend skiing these runs from the top. This is some of the best terrain off Chair 10 and the mountain in general. All the way is a very steep corniced chute. Its entrance is similar in difficulty to the main entrance of the wall, but it's steeper and longer. If it's been a poor or snow year and the run hasn't fully filled out, you may have to drop some small cliffs present at the bottom of the cornice entry. However, these disappear as the season continues. After the drop in, you'll have access to some truly fantastic snow in Wagon Wheel Bowl. This bowl feels nearly endless in width, but it's not long before you enter a very steep below tree line gully. This gully marks the second half of all the way and has some very steep and narrow sections. For some extra challenge, the rock walls that define the goalie can make for some great drops. All the way from top to bottom is such an epic run, but I think there are some even cooler runs in this zone. Not Shoot is the next run over and is one of the most hilariously inconsistent runs on the mountain. What I mean by this is that season by season this run always looks and skis completely different. Some years it can require down climbing before you put it under skis in the gut of the chute. Other times it can be a very fun and relatively chill low angle straight line. If you search up multiple videos on YouTube, you'll see how this run basically never looks exactly the same. That being said, Not Shoot is one of my personal favorite runs in this area since the few times I've skied it, it was in really good condition. To get to Notch, go past all the way and walk around the massive cliffs ahead of you. This is a very rocky area and I highly, highly recommend taking off your skis if you care about your equipment. Past the main entrance, which is a really fun straight line, the run follows a very similar pattern to all the way. The couloir that comprises the second half of Notch Chute is probably the steepest of these three lower goalies in Wagon Wheel Bowl. Past Notch Chute, you'll have to hike to access the remaining runs in the area, although the hike is pretty short and brings you to the top of some really wicked terrain. The first run you'll come to on this hike is the infamous and unmarked Once Is Enough. Once Is Enough can be thought of as the marquee straight line in a resort known for its straight lines. Once Is Enough is one of the most intimidating chutes on the west coast. It requires a cornice drop into a 100 foot straight line between two massive cliffs. The hardest part about once is enough is what comes afterward, as the bowl quickly flattens out and becomes very bumpy. This makes it really hard to maintain control as you exit the chute at insanely high speeds. Similar to Dick's drop, once is enough is a run that becomes slightly easier and wider as more snow falls. Hike a bit further to the summit of the sisters for what is debatably the hardest run off chair 10, heart chute. This run actually looks like a heart when viewed from afar and is one of the gnarliest runs around. This is only skiable during good snow years and should absolutely not be attempted otherwise. The entrance is corniced and then you'll have to billy goat down an incredibly steep chute and then commit to a straight line with a mandatory 20 foot drop at the end. 
At the end of this drop lies a wind lip that can easily mess up your balance. Both Once is Enough and Heart Shoot will bring you to some really nice trees between the gullies of Lower Notch Shoot and Lower Sisters Shoot. Although, it's still possible to traverse to either of the aforementioned gullies if you'd like to ski them specifically. Log past Heart Shoot to get to Upper Sister Shoot, an epic couloir through two large boulders that's my personal favorite run off Chair 10. Upper Sister Shoot is also called Diagonal Shoot by locals and is essentially an easier version of Heart Shoot without the 20 foot cliff drop at the end. It still involves a large cornice entry and its right wall is very steep. If Upper Sister Shoot is too intimidating for you, then the next shoot over, Sister Shoot, is a great alternative. Sister Shoot is easier, but it's still a really fun boulder to find entrance into this part of Wagon Wheel Bowl. Both entrances will bring you to Lower Sister Shoot, another very fun gully that stands out due to its rocky walls, which serve as fantastic spines and drops. Hike down from the summit of the Sisters and ski down 100 feet to access the most remote run in Wagon Wheel Bowl, False Peak Shoot, which was previously known as Schaefer's Shoot. False Peak Shoot is probably the least interesting run in Wagon Wheel Bowl, and one of the easiest double black diamonds at the resort. However, it always has some great snow since no one seems to make it here. Note that False Peak Shoot, Saddle Shoot, and Cliff Shoot do not filter into unique gullies like how All the Way, Not Shoot, and the Sisters Shoots do. You can technically access Saddle Shoot from Tier 10, but I wouldn't recommend it as it's faster to get there via Chair 6. As previously mentioned, the best snow in Wagon Wheel Bowl will be found in the trees. My favorite glades in Wagon Wheel Bowl are the trees between Dick's Drop and All the Way, Not Shoot and Sister Shoot, and Sister Shoot and False Peak Shoot. All of these seem to consistently hold really good snow. All runs in Wagon Wheel Bowl filter into the drain, which can be taken back to either Chair 6 or Chair 10 for more runs in this epic part of the mountain. Well, that's about it for the legendary Chair 10 terrain. Go check out parts B and D now, all about the rest of the mountain. As always, please leave any questions down below. Thank you all so much for watching. All my love, I'm out.